Hi guys and welcome back to the Female Fitness Podcast. I'm your host Danny, and today I am doing a solo podcast. I was actually going to do a podcast on a different topic. However, this one is very current in my mind. So I wanted to do this podcast today and I will cover the other topic at a later date, probably in next week's podcast. But I hope you enjoy. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about the subjects that I'm going to cover today and why I wanted to do it now as opposed to waiting until a later date. So the subject is why sometimes taking a step back is necessary in order to effectively move forwards. And this can be applied to so many different areas of your life. But an example of that, which is why I wanted to cover this topic today, is I recently took a little bit of a step back from social media, only briefly, but it was necessary for me to continue to move forwards effectively. So an example, although it might seem a little bit backwards, sometimes what you need to do in order to progress either personally or professionally or with both is in fact either just pause and sit where you are for a moment or take a step backwards in order to continue to move forwards effectively in the right direction in the direction that is right for you an example in the context of resistance training would be running a deload or taking a break from training when you're ill and having a few extra rest days this is something that I encourage with clients and continually have to reinforce that sometimes rest is what's necessary in order to continue to move forwards. Because when you have a great work ethic, as most of my clients do, in fact, I think all of my clients do, that great work ethic sometimes means that you can get into the habit of thinking that doing more or working harder is always better and always going to result in more progress which is not the case and especially if you need to sort of reassess and change your direction a little bit if you're moving forwards aggressively towards a certain goal and that goal itself needs changing you're wasting time aggressively moving forwards towards that goal and sometimes actually taking a step back or taking a step back or taking a step to the side and sitting where you are for a moment is what you need to do in order to change your route, change your course of your route of direction and move towards the goal that you actually should be working towards. And an example of that in the context of business is obviously last year, I made the decision not to coach bodybuilding competitors anymore. If I had continued to move forwards and push my business in that direction of coaching competitors, it would have taken away from the time that I could have been moving my business in a different direction. So it was important for me in that situation to take a step back, reassess and move the direction that I was traveling in to what I really wanted to move towards. Otherwise it would have been an absolutely huge waste of energy, time, effort. And also whilst I was pushing towards moving my business in that direction of coaching competitors towards the end I knew something wasn't quite right and so I didn't feel my best self so it was important for me to take a step back and change that course change the direction that I was headed in and so just re-emphasizing why sometimes it is important to take a step back rather than just pushing and pushing and pushing in a certain direction and pushing aggressively to move forwards just going back to that example of training when you're ill if you were to try and push on aggressively and continue to to move forwards and try to train through it you would probably just prolong the illness and so therefore prolong the amount of time that you're unable to train as effectively as you possibly can um, and potentially in the end have to have longer away from training so another example of where actually trying to push on and trying to continue to move forwards is not going to be the right decision and where actually just taking a step to the side and sitting where you are for a moment and taking a break from resistance training will enable you to get back to feeling and functioning as as your best self and get you back to a position where you can push 
with training again and really train within a close proximity to failure and make sure every training session is as effective as it can be because let's face it it's not going to be as effective as it can be if you're run down if your immune system is suppressed and your recovery is going to be hindered and that will hinder your your progress um so yeah sometimes it's important just to take a step to the side or a step backwards in order to continue to move forwards another example for me personally which is recent which i just touched on briefly and the reason i wanted to record this podcast today rather than waiting and recording it at a later date is that i did come away from instagram um for just under a week and the reason for this was that i noticed i was feeling a little bit off i didn't feel as though i was functioning behaving communicating as or feeling my best self and in the past the past version of me would have in this situation just increased my workload increased my training frequency or the duration of my sessions and done that in order to block everything out and ignore the gut feeling I had I would have blocked out the way I was feeling by essentially staying busy even if that busyness wasn't really productive busyness and I'm now much more self-aware and I'm much more respectful of my own needs I know when I do need to go a little bit more internal and remove distractions such as social media and focus on myself so that I can give myself the time and the brain space I need to address anything that needs addressing, to feel and work through any emotions that are arising rather than just blocking them out with busyness or distracting myself with other things. And therefore, as a result of allowing myself this time, this brain space and allowing myself to feel those emotions that are arising and work through them, I can get back to my usual self, get back to being in tune with my intuition and communicating as and functioning as my best self. And it's important to remember, especially for those of us that do have a job where we are catering to other people a service-based job or anyone who has a family and is constantly catering for other people if you have a partner and you have to consider their needs it's really important to remember that you can't serve other people to the best of your ability unless you respect and look after yourself if you're not communicating as feeling functioning as your best self how on earth do you expect to be the best partner the best mother the best sister the best friend you can't you're not going to be able to to serve other people to the best of your ability unless you look after and respect yourself first and it's really really important to remember that you can't pour from an empty cup and so I take ownership and responsibility of how I show up in the world. And I don't like feeling as though I'm not showing up as my best self. So now when something is off, when I don't feel my best self, I'm not afraid to take a step back or a step to the side because it's not always a step backwards. Sometimes it's just a step at maintenance in order to address what needs addressing so that I can move forwards intentionally in the right direction and more effectively. So what I wanted to share with you during this podcast is, first of all, what I've just shared with you, the reason for that, and hopefully you'll take something away from that and try to implement that into your own lives when you do feel like something needs addressing or something is a little bit off hopefully you'll be a little bit more willing to take a step back or take a step to the side or even when it comes to your own training you'll be more willing to take a deload when it's necessary or take a break when you're ill so that you can continue to move forwards but I also wanted to share with you what I learned from taking a step back from social media it was mostly just Instagram that I took a step back from um, because that is the social media platform that I'm most prominent on and I put the most emphasis on. 
so I basically just temporarily deactivated my Instagram account, which you can do. And you can also just limit your screen time. If you'd rather do that, then take a complete break. But for me, I just needed to remove it completely. So I deactivated my Instagram account. And what that does is it just removes your profile. So no one can search for you. No one can tag you. No one can message you. And yeah, your Instagram account just basically doesn't exist. It's like just temporarily deleting it. And then when you log back in, it reactivates your account. So the reason I did it that way is so that no one could like tag me. No one, I knew that no one would be messaging me um, and therefore didn't feel a need to be responsive to people because I knew that people would know that my account wasn't there. So they couldn't message me and they couldn't tag me. Um, and I didn't therefore feel like I was ignoring people. So that's the approach that I had to take to it. And what I learned from this, like I said, it was just under a week away from Instagram. Um, I probably would have been tempted to do longer. but I had a podcast releasing on Monday, which I did want to share. And now I've come back on to Instagram. I'm, I feel like I'm doing it from a better headspace and with more intention. And I'm not just like posting for posting sake. And so even though I'm back on Instagram, I'm not as caught up in it as what I was before I took a step back from it. And I'm almost continuing um, that sort of almost detachment a little bit to some extent. Not, I'm trying to be, what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to be more intentional with my use of, of the app as opposed to consuming mindlessly. And so what I, what I learned from detaching myself completely from Instagram is first of all, there are many different ways of progressing from a business perspective. And often I put too much emphasis on Instagram when it comes to my online presence on there. I put huge pressure on myself to post daily and to be active on my stories daily with my business being online because obviously consistency is important and that does have its place and can be beneficial. But I think sometimes it's good to take a step back and consider the other tools that we have at our disposal as with people, as people with online businesses, such as the other routes we could use are private Facebook groups, um, Facebook pages which are public, podcasts such as this one, the Female Fitness Podcast, email lists and also just reaching out to people that are in our community or have been in the past via email or message, whatever that may be. There are many different ways of contacting people that don't have to be through Instagram. There are of course other social media platforms such as TikTok, which to be honest, I don't actually invest my time into. I do have a TikTok account, but I, I just don't really entertain the app because I feel like it's a bit of a, a hole that once you get into, it's very hard to then come off because there are, sometimes my friends will send me like funny videos on TikTok and I know they are hilarious, some of them. Some of them are even useful. I know there's a lot of like makeup things on there. Um, from what my sister and friends have said, but I also know that it's a bit of an addictive hole. And once you get onto the app, it's hard to remove yourself. And I just don't have that time to waste. So TikTok is one that I don't really entertain, even though it could be a tool at my disposal. It's just one that I've sort of kept my distance from at the moment. You never know, maybe that will change. But at the moment, it's, I just feel like it's a bit of a a hole that people struggle to get out of and it's probably a bit of a waste of time for me at the moment so I've kept my distance from TikTok but it's there as an option there's also of course YouTube there's LinkedIn and we don't want to spread ourselves too thin you know we don't want to be trying to progress on every single platform out there however what we can do is we can have a look at a few different platforms and consider trying to progress with those see how they work so not all of them but it's worth not just relying on one that's the point i'm trying to get across and i think i have definitely been guilty of putting all of my eggs in one basket with instagram and um, obviously i also have the podcast which is great but I do put too much emphasis on Instagram sometimes, and this is something that I want to 
just address in my own mind and from a business perspective and it's something that I'm going to consider working on looking at different routes and maybe putting a bit more emphasis on for example my weekly emails and things like that so just something to consider and it's something that I'm learning so I wanted to share that learning with you it's also great being active and posting daily however I think you have to ask yourself you know is the information you're putting out actually valuable and is it in line with who you are and what you're trying to put out into the world and are you showing up as your best self because I think it's very obvious when people aren't showing up as the best, their best selves or aren't being very authentic on social media and that is probably going to do more harm than good for your business so yeah it's great to be consistent and it's great to post I've probably been the fucking queen of consistency in the past and that's great but like is that is that valuable what you're posting or are you just showing up for showing up's sake and I think there's definitely a debate there to be had like that I'm still having in my own head is it better to be super consistent on social media or is it better to allow yourself to maybe be less consistent but make sure that what you're putting out into the world is incredibly valuable so is it quality over quantity or is it quantity or consistency does that matter over quality and I definitely think that there's a debate to be had there and often people go with the quantity side of the debate when it comes to social media because of things like algorithms etc which I do completely understand and this is still a debate that I'm having in my own head I guess the 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 best case scenario would be that you are consistent daily and that daily information that you're putting out is also good quality but at the end of the day we're human and I think that it is very difficult to stay on top of that whilst managing all of the other aspects of business. Um, and I guess this is where hiring people comes in, um, hiring assistants and things like that, automating certain parts of your business so that you have more time to invest into things like consistent quality social media content. And I'm literally just talking out loud here. So hopefully you'll be able to take something useful from my thoughts and I'm just sharing that with you I'm not saying that being more consistent is better than putting out quality information I'm not saying that quality is better than being consistent I'm literally just sharing my thoughts with you and the debate that I sometimes have in my own head so hopefully you find that insightful and I sometimes like to share my thoughts as food for other people's thoughts I think it's good to question things and not always just go with the flow so hopefully I have promoted some thoughts in your own head and encourage you to think for yourselves about these subjects so yeah it's great posting daily and being active daily but is the information you're putting out valuable and in line with who you are are you showing up as your best self if not maybe I or we need to take a step back and reassess so that we can move forwards and we can get to a point where we're able to be consistent but that consistent information is quality um but sometimes i think to get to that point we have to take a step back or take a step to the side and this is the situation i found myself in i felt as though i needed to remove social media as a distraction so that i could improve my ability to listen to my intuition make decisions that needed to be made and um just take a little bit of time for myself to sort of reassess and, and ground myself before just moving forwards like a steam train and not considering the direction i'm going in or um whether the information i'm putting out is quality and that's what i personally felt like i needed to do because i do care about quality over just putting out endless information at the end of the day and that's what i value personally um and taking a break from being on my main social media platform, that being Instagram, meant that 
I was able to be more present without an underlying anxious feeling that I needed to get back to my phone to respond to people because I knew that I had messages coming in. And this is something that I wanted to tackle and will continue to work on and carry forwards with me. So I found in the past, like when I start to feel overwhelmed, there's obviously with there's commonly with that this like underlying anxious sort of feeling that I I need to be responding to people all the time and so that's something that I wanted to to tackle with this little break from social media or at least start to work on and then continue to work on moving forwards as I come back onto Instagram so I don't want to feel like I'm constantly needing to respond and I think it took completely removing myself from the app to remove that completely and then now I can continue to work on that moving forwards and when I do feel that feeling just about asking why like why do I feel that need to respond immediately and is it serving anyone and I think truly the answer to that is no it's not serving anyone it's there's no you know Instagram is something that I do yes it is a part of my work it is a part of my business progression however at the end of the day it is something that I do yes it helps me build my business but I don't make an income from Instagram I don't make an income from responding to people I don't do paid posts or anything like that so it's important to bear that in mind when I'm setting my expectations of myself on the app and when I'm looking at how I'm structuring my day and when I'm looking at my priorities because my priority needs to be other aspects of life above responding to people on Instagram and I will always get back to everyone on Instagram because I appreciate everyone on there so much however it doesn't have to be immediate and sometimes actually waiting and responding at a more appropriate time will mean that the response is more thoughtful more meaningful and more valuable anyway as opposed to just responding as quickly as possible but that response may be not being very valuable and not actually serving the person that I'm responding to I would rather take a couple of hours to respond and send someone a thoughtful message or a voice note as opposed to quickly responding on the fly and it not really benefiting anyone in any way. So I think that's something that a lot of us on social media platforms maybe need to think about um, and remind ourselves there's no need to feel that like pressure, that underlying anxiety to respond immediately. And I know it's easier said than done to get rid of that, but I think with constant work, it can be done. And another thing that it learned, I taught, what? Another thing that I learned after spending a little bit of time away from Instagram is that it made me appreciate everything offline more. Um, So, you know, spending time with friends, being out in nature, just being present with where I'm at. And again, this is something that I'm going to carry forwards with me. I want to be continuously more conscious with my social media usage and make sure that I'm either creating on there or so creating useful information or consciously consuming useful information or, you know, looking at catching up with my friends or you know serving people in my direct messages as opposed to just mindlessly scrolling like a lot of people get into including myself sometimes I mean I am usually quite good with this and I don't often mindlessly scroll on Instagram and I do think that I do it a lot less than the majority um but I am human and when I have something going on personally like I have done previously, or I feel a little bit off in some way or another. This is something that I find sometimes slips for me. So I notice that when I do get into the routine of scrolling mindlessly or just not being as conscious or as intentful as I could be on social media, it's usually when there's something else going on that needs addressing. 
Um, and again, it's like, it's almost like a coping mechanism. It's me keeping myself busy by scrolling social media so that I'm not addressing what needs addressing. And that's where it becomes a problem. And so, yeah, when I, when I find myself doing that, I just have to call myself out on it and take a step back and be like, right, what's really going on here? Is there something else that needs addressing? Or um, sometimes I think it can just be due to like, boredom or loneliness that you end up scrolling and again is that something that needs addressing or could you be a bit more conscious and mindful with your social media usage and consume something that is maybe a useful q a or someone that you know is really intelligent that's producing useful content could you look at that as opposed to just scrolling mindlessly especially when sometimes scrolling mindlessly can result in things like comparison which can be very unhelpful at times or um you know just getting triggered by bs information that that is gonna that triggering is gonna have a negative impact on how you feel so can you afford to inflict that on yourself at the end of the day via scrolling mindlessly or could you be more conscious with your social media usage and your social media consumption and could you unfollow anyone's account that does affect you in any negative sort of way it's definitely something worth thinking about there but I hope this podcast has been useful for you guys. Like I said, I just wanted to share with you what I learned from taking a step back from Instagram. And although it was only short, it was a very useful period of time. And like I said, I probably would have taken longer if it wasn't for me having podcasts being released that I did want to share. And now whilst I'm on Instagram, I'm a lot less, I don't feel the need to constantly be um, under pressure to respond immediately or post constantly even after that short break and that's something that I want to continue to work on and I want to implement what I've learned from my little break and hopefully you can learn from that too and just to remind you the point of this podcast is that sometimes and this can be applied to many different aspects of life I'm not just talking about social media I'm not just talking about business like in the example I gave at the start of this podcast with training, sometimes we need to take a step to the side, so a step at maintenance where we are and we just need to be still for a second, or we need to take a step backwards and look at the bigger picture in order to continue to move forwards. We need to give ourselves a break in order to continue to move forwards in the right direction as our best selves. So it's something that I hope you can take away from this podcast please let me know as always if you have any questions whatsoever I am always more than happy to help so please don't hesitate to reach out via Instagram direct message my Instagram is Danny Bosworth or via email my email is hello at dannybosworth.com I am genuinely happy to help however I possibly can and please let me know if you do have any requests for future episodes of the female fitness podcast if you do enjoy my content please do like and subscribe down below and leave me a review on itunes spotify or leave a comment below on youtube it would mean the absolute world please share on your instagram story if you are listening to the content on the female fitness podcast so that i can reach more people genuinely it's it's my only way of growing essentially you guys are my way of growing so please share that you are listening and tag a friend or share it with a friend share it on social media um and if anyone would like any i am sponsored by full ball sports if anyone would like any supplements they stock multiple brands part of the reason i'm with full ball is because they do stock multiple different brands and i don't have to promote anything that i don't believe in i don't use all of the supplements on their website but they do have a very wide range and um you can use the code danny10 at the checkout to save you a little bit of money i don't make commission off of that code i don't make money off of that code it's just to show that people come through me to their site you can get my favorite products are the perform way um by perform i my favorite flavors are the glazed donut flavor and the 
chocolate brownie batter flavored whey if anyone wants any recommendations i also like the support max neuro pm from strom which is on that site and i also use fish oil and vitamin d as well and creatine all of which you can get from full bore so if any of you are interested use code danny10 at the checkout let me know what you get and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day i will see you on next week's episode guys thank you so much for listening from the bottom of my heart And yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day.